G'day and welcome. There are four basic identities that you need to know for trigonometry and I've explained them in some detail in the previous three videos. In this video I'm going to show you how to learn and remember them and make sense of them and I intend to do so in a fairly quick way. Every afternoon when you get home from school this is what I suggest you do. Just draw four, three circles. and draw axes on them. These are going to be our unit circles. So, y and x-axis, y and x-axis, y and x-axis. I can't help myself, I need to label these properly. Uh, there I go, put numbers in the wrong positions. But these are unit circles, so they have a radius of 1. Now this should take you oh, 20 or 30 seconds perhaps. I'm going to change colours at this point. And we're going to draw three triangles, uh, three right angle triangles, one for each of the triads. The first right angle triangle is drawn inside the unit circle. And in this case, because the circle has a radius of 1, we know that this length is 1, the hypotenuse. Now we'll come back and visit this. We're measuring our angle theta from the positive x-axis. In the next one, we draw a tangent, a vertical tangent, at x equals 1. That means that this distance is 1 unit. And I think you can see that. And again, we draw our triangle with angle theta. But this time, you notice, the triangle extends outside the circle. In the third case, we draw a tangent horizontally at y equals 1. And again, we draw our angle theta. Now, in the last video, I actually talked about this triangle, mainly because this had got so cluttered up it was easier to talk about the lengths up there. But it's probably more consistent to talk about this triangle by dropping the perpendicular here to the x-axis. This you'll realize is a rectangle because the y-axis and the perpendicular are parallel and so is the x-axis and the tangent. This is a right angle and this height here is the same as this radius of the circle which is one. So our three triangles, all in the same position, all with angle theta, have a hypotenuse of 1, a base of 1, or an altitude of 1. Now, there are six trigonometric ratios you need to know, and believe it or not, they're all here. In this one, the height of this triangle is sine theta. In this one, the base is cosine of theta. And for this little diagram, we get two identities. The first is not Pythagorean, it simply is an understanding of what the tangent is. Sorry, that should be tan theta equals. And the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is sine theta over cosine of theta. And I'll put three strokes because this is in fact an identity, which means that it is true for every value of theta. And the second identity we get is a Pythagorean identity. By applying Pythagoras' theorem to the right angle triangle, we can see, since these are the two short sides, that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one squared, which I'll write here, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. I won't write 1 squared. In this one here, it transpires that if this is 1, the distance on the tangent, the length up the tangent, is tan theta. Well, that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? And this length here is the secant of theta, sec theta. 
I explained that about two videos ago. Applying Pythagoras' theorem, we get tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. That's the second of our Pythagorean identities. By the way, there's no particular order for these. I just happen to like this order. Uh, this is normally the first one we do. And these two are normally not described in textbooks. Uh, you'll go through quite a few mathematics textbooks before you, you find anything like this. But I find it a helpful way to understand the ratios and the identities. Now, of course, I should... I've just reminded myself that these are identities. And the last one... This length is 1, the altitude, the base of the triangle is the cotangent of theta and the hypotenuse is the cosecant of theta. So we get cot squared theta plus 1, because they're the two short sides of this right angle triangle, equal cosec squared theta. And you can see that these two have a great similarity. Tan and sec, cotan, cosec. Now, if you draw this every afternoon, I suppose it might take you Oh, perhaps two and a half, three, three and a half minutes. It's not a great deal of time, but if you do this every afternoon for perhaps three or four or five afternoons, you'll find that by the end of the week, you'll be able to draw them quite rapidly. You'll, you'll be starting to understand where these come from and they'll be in, almost become intuitive. And there's one last part of the puzzle that I'd encourage you to do. And that is to estimate. When you know that this is sine or this is cosine, just estimate some angle in here and try to work out what the height or the base of that particular triangle would be worth. For example, uh, if we chose 70 degrees, which would be about here, you can see the height's probably 0.9 something, and I think 70 is about there, so the base would be about 0.4. So I'd assume that cosine of 70 would be about 0.4. I'm taking a risk now. I'm going to check afterwards, but uh, you might check it as well. And the sine would be about 0.9 or something like that. Uh, in this one, if we chose... Let's, let's choose 70 degrees, for example. If we chose 70 degrees, you could see that this would... Oh, 70 is probably about here. This would go quite some distance up before it met the tangent. So the tangent of theta, uh, tangent of 70 would be, oh, perhaps 4 or something like that. And the secant would be just a little tiny bit longer because it's the hypotenuse, as you can see. And here, if we did we found something like 70 degrees, the triangle here, the cotangent wouldn't be that great, perhaps. 0.3, something like that. It's a bit hard to estimate in there, maybe a little bit more. And you can see that the uh, cosecant will be just over 1, perhaps 1.1 or something like that. But those things you can do, you can make the estimates and check them on your calculator and become quite accomplished at estimating cotangents, cosecants, tangents and secants and sines and cosines of angles up to 100, up to 360 degrees. But that's it. Every afternoon for a week. That's my challenge, that's my encouragement to you, and I think you'll find that you benefit enormously. These identities, by the way, all four of them, uh, become phenomenally useful when you start doing intriguing things like integrating uh, trigonometric functions in calculus, and therein lies a great adventure. But I, that's, for, that's a story for another time. If you've enjoyed this, please click the like button, and of course I'd love to 
receive your comments if you're happy to write one. And if you're not a subscriber, please click on the subscribe button so you can find out about future videos. And as always, I thank you for watching.